Greetings once again. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. One of the our, our talk today focuses on the latest Bob Lutz versus Tesla analysis. Bob suggested that people are overestimating Tesla and underestimating General Motors. And we unpack that discussion right now and its sort of impact on the U.S. auto industry. Greetings once again, this is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Today's talk is focused on, I want to say, my latest round of Bob Lutz analysis of Tesla and the auto industry and where things are headed. The gate for states, no kimals by binan tarazi te ni hao ma. So Bob Lutz has made a suggestion that there's a problem going on, which is people overestimating Tesla and underestimating GM and Ford and other major automakers. What I found interesting after he made this comment on CNBC on October 4th was he then pointed out that he has sort of changed his stripes versus the last time he spoke when he said that Tesla could not make it. He has now come up with a new thesis and that thesis is that you know General Motors 8L really doesn't care what the power method is be it diesel, um, electricity, or whatever it may be, General Motors is willing to meet the market at whatever type of fuel it's choosing to use. And in this case, there's a discussion of what's going on with electric. Now, he then goes on to say that General Motors has products planned and has current products in the lithium ion space. And he also confirmed that GM does not make money, in fact, loses money on its current fleet of vehicles. But frankly, this is slightly irrelevant because what's actually going on is, is that this is a loss leader. So there are tax credits that go with those vehicles. So even though they're a loss, it does allow them to sell truck products to make up for this loss. So there is a way that Tesla can work it out currently and what they're waiting for is the cost of lithium battery and batteries to drop so that they can profitably make those vehicles. Now I'm fascinated because what the what Bob didn't discuss is the fact that with the new 2170 battery Tesla can actually make money on cars currently with the current pricing of lithium ion batteries. The problem is that GM doesn't have its own battery plants and therefore has to rely on other manufacturers who have to mark up the products they produce. And this just adds to the losses GM and others have. So I'm sort of shocked, amazed, blown away because there's a, one of the things that he didn't discuss is that there seems to be what I call a definition problem of what the entire auto industry is about. What I mean by this is the fact that if you have a vehicle and it gets individuals from point A to point B, um, Previously, that was horse-drawn carriages, but over the last hundred years, the optimization is, has been on using uh, gasoline or, or oil-powered uh, combustion engines to move vehicles from point A to point B, way more efficient for, than horses for a whole bunch of reasons. So... What seems to be happening right now is GM and others may in fact be stuck in a vision of how their vehicles or, or how people are supposed to move. And that vision, you know, could end up being costly because of customer shifts in terms of what customers want to do.
so in specific, what's going on is that as we move to an electric drive situation, as we all know, electric is 90% efficient. So the theory from the auto business, as Bob Lutz articulates it, is that our job is to build the vehicle. We don't want to touch any of the fuel. Now, this is fascinating because the costs of putting your own supercharger stations in, the costs of building batteries and the management system associated with those batteries relative to the vehicle, GM has decided to stay out of this side of the house and they have made no announcements about building gigafactories or other ways to step into this side of the business. And it's my assessment that this may be the death of American auto companies because eventually this will become a commodity, call it 10 years out, uh, that side of the house. But unfortunately, during the period until it becomes a commodity, there's a whole bunch of companies that won't exist to see the commoditization that might emerge over time in this manner. And that includes GM and Ford. So I bring this up because um, I think it's great that Bob Lutz has shown some evolution in the thought process that uh, the U.S. auto companies might be going through. But there's some realistic business nightmares that they're facing. Um, as you all know, GM just pulled out of Europe. Why? Because they don't have any uniqueness to product that allows them to sell vehicles in Europe and therefore they pulled out. At the same time GM pulled out of Europe, Tesla became the number one vehicle being sold in Norway. So I think this kind of says that there is where there's an interest in vehicles in Europe. It's just that GM doesn't have the expertise or the follow through to be able to put cars in Europe that Europeans want to buy and drive. There's a notable exception to this, which I think is completely amazing. And that is that there's actually a month long waiting list for the European version of the Chevy Bolt. And it's a no brainer why that is. Um, in Europe, it's $9 a gallon because of all the taxes added. And the equivalent of $1 a gallon if those same people use electric. So GM, in essence, refuses to ship the Bolt to Europe. But the Bolt is the exact vehicle that Europeans would love to get their hands on because the value proposition is so strong. So I'm fascinated by this. Uh, going on because, I mean, it's very clear why GM cannot sell the Bolt in Europe in large numbers. And the reason is that because they don't make batteries and they're using, um, and the battery technology they're using, which is the pouch version of 18650, um, they lose money on every car. So if they moved to Europe and sold huge numbers of them, they would just lose large amounts of money. And until they're able to build their own battery factory four or five years down the road, um, they're kind of stuck. So I think it's fascinating, interesting to watch GM slash GM executives discussing Tesla being overestimated while the U.S. manufacturers are underestimated because it's very clear that their strategy is to wait till the cost of lithium ion drops and then switch. The problem that pops up though is with that switch, what happens to their com GM's competitiveness with other entities that do the switch at the same time? So long-winded statement to say, I think that it's clear what the logic is of the U.S. manufacturers, which is to wait out the um, the transition in price of lithium ion batteries to be competitive. I think it, when you look at how Mercedes Benz slash Daimler has responded to this arena, I think they're doing a smart move, which is to buy into manufacturers of the batteries as well as prepare to pr produce their own. 
this is another case where, unfortunately, in my mind, I think that um, we have a situation where U.S. manufacturers uh, understand what's going on and they're choosing a path um, that sets them up to go bankrupt sooner than later. And I think it's unfortunate because there are so many people whose jobs depend on their decision making. Look forward to your comments on this. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Tschüss, macht's gut, au revoir, lietrohut. Please like and subscribe. And um, I'd also like to have any suggestions of things that folks think that we should be covering. We have more video coming on different topics, but it's always good to get uh, user feedback on key areas you know, that they think are important that we should be covering. Have a great day. Thanks, and we shall chat in our next round.